Christian, this year, we're growing stronger together in gospel health. And this time, I'm having a heart-to-heart with fellow leaders. (laughs) Leaders. If God gauged your spiritual well-being by how faithfully you are collaborating in gospel ministry with others, how healthy are you? Because all Christians are commanded by God to imitate their leaders. And in this episode of The Equipping Evangelist, we'll talk about the last shall be first core category of leadership. And we'll also learn how the evangelistic example of those called by God to lead others contributes to the overall gospel health of Christians and our churches. This is The Equipping Evangelist, a podcast that equips your entire church for evangelism together. My name's Corey McKenna, and after years as a pastor and evangelist in the local church, I founded an equipping ministry called The Cross Current, and now this podcast, all to share my experience and expertise with you. Okay, quick context on this series of the podcast. After many years of equipping churches by example in evangelism, gospel health is the term we use to understand a Christian and an entire church's collective well-being in those doctrines and practices of several critical categories that really come together for healthy gospel ministry. And in this episode, we're asking and answering two key questions. Catch these. Number one, how does collaborative core leadership help our overall gospel health together? That's question one. And question two, what might ministry actually and practically look like when shepherds and equipping evangelists effectively collaborate together? Now, if you are a church leader, please listen very, very carefully. This episode at first listen may sound as though I'm placing the blame for gospel unhealth square on you, but that's not true. Okay, which is why you have to go to gospelhealthreport.com, click on the history tab, and there you're going to hear a heart-to-heart conversation between the church leaders who co-developed this resource. And what you're going to learn is that the Gospel Health Report has actually been built, hear this, by church leaders, for church leaders to help and not hurt you and your churches. Okay? Clarifying point. So, let's talk leadership. Most of today's most popular perspectives on leadership begin with a a hierarchical, you say that? Hierarchical model or a top-down sort of approach. But as Christians, our standards are set from scripture where we see how Jesus's model of servant leadership was foundationally was fundamentally different, wasn't it? And I want to read briefly from John's gospel, chapter 13, this story where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. And we read in John 13, starting at verse 12, when he, Jesus, had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, hear this, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Wow. Okay, now we offer entire seminars on gospel leadership, but biblically, What we see from the example of Jesus, the example of Paul, and all the other leaders in Scripture, we see that a leader, biblically, is a servant of Christ who seeks to model a faithful walk of gospel growth, who gives direction and discipleship through equipping, and also collaborates, that's a key word, in the gospel mission. 
And for this podcast, the focus of this episode will be core church leadership. So we're talking, you know, uh, elders and deacons and pastors and teachers, those who have a seat at that particular leadership table. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So at the Cross Current, we teach that healthy gospel leadership is collaborative in gospel ministry, not just cooperative in gospel ministry. Please track with this because words matter. Okay, so let me let me briefly teach this through. Cooperative. Cooperative means working together agreeably. You know, sort of like this. Hey, equipping evangelist, what do you need to run the ball up the field? So if you've pictured this like a football game, you're the quarterback, you're the equipping evangelist, and your cooperative core leaders are asking, hey, what do you need, hear that, to run the ball up the field? But collaborative core leadership, okay, that means working together aggressively, Cooperative, working together agreeably, but collaborative means working together aggressively. Hey, equipping evangelist, hear this. What are we doing to move the ball up the field together? See, because they're coaching on the field. Yes, yes, the equipping evangelist may be the quarterback that's running those plays, gifted and called by God, but those core leaders are coaching that equipping evangelist on the field collaboratively, aggressively. We, it moves from me to we. So practically, practically, what might ministry look like when shepherds and equipping evangelists effectively collaborate together? That is a great question. Now, another way to ask the same question might be this. Really, what is a a, a biblical and a practical expectation for mutual gospel ministry bet- between collaborative core leaders and their equipping evangelists. What, like, what does that look like? Well, I, I want to get really, really, really practical. And I want to consider the extremes of those expectations on, on both sides of the question. And then we'll try to bring biblical balance by coming to the middle. Okay, I want you to catch this again. And I, I want to share some, some offside, what I would call offside sample statements from a core leader on the totally uncollaborative extreme of mutual gospel ministry. Okay, they might say something like this. Hey, look, evangelist, evangelism is your ministry, not mine. That's out of bounds. That's out of balance. They might say this, look, you catch the fish and I clean the fish. My ministry is all about teaching God's word. That's not going to work. That's not collaborative core leadership. Here's my personal favorite. I don't have the gift of evangelism. Now, I have <laughs> I have lots to say about that as a leader of an equipping evangelism evangelism ministry, but moving on, moving on. What might be some offside sample statements and, and expectations from an equipping evangelist on the totally unrealistic extreme of mutual gospel ministry? Because we've got our baggage too, okay? Equipping evangelists might say this, hey, pastor, if you're not out on the streets every week, don't expect your congregants to go. Man, that, that's out of bounds. That's not what I'm talking about here. Or, or they might say, you know, the son of man came to seek and save the lost. Do you do that, pastor? or elder, or deacon, right? (laughs) And of course, again, my personal favorite, Charles Spurgeon open air preached. Wow. Well, while there's some truth in all of that, all of that, okay, I want to close with what I call an inclusive illustration to picture what mutual gospel ministry could and probably should look like between collaborative core leaders, equipping, evangelists, and their entire church together. Okay, you ready for this? Now, the illustration is about gospel mission and warship. Worship? Well, yes, worship, but also warship. And this has been shared on this podcast before. But I've come to realize many, many, many years of serving in and with the local church in equipping evangelism. I've come to realize that many in the church picture gospel mission as sort of like that that World War II war 
ship scene. Can, can you see it? You know, it's, it's black and white film, and the film's kind of flickering. And what we have is we have the soldiers who are boarding the ship, you know, with, with guns, and they're waving, and they're the heroes of the narrative. And, and the others are on the dock, and, and they're waving to the soldiers, and they're throwing flowers. They might be crying. And it's sort of pictured as, you know, the missionaries, the evangelists, those who actually share the gospel, they're on the warship, while those on the church side are the ones supporting that wartime effort. Now, this is not to discredit those called to, you know, to the end of the earth and to go on uh, on long-term missions. Absolutely not. We are fully supportive, okay, of those who go to the end of the earth. But, 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 but I, I want to share with you the biblical picture. What we believe here at the Cross Current is the more biblical picture is everyone is on that warship as an act of of worship of the king. But it's true, we all serve in different ways. We all have different roles and responsibilities, just like the military. But what's interesting about the military is no matter what role you serve in, you are routinely equipped and engaged, here it is, by example, in handling your rifle. Well, at the cross current, we would we would sort of illustrate handling your rifle as stewarding the gospel. Every Christian, as an act of worship, should be able to steward the gospel, to share the gospel, to teach the Christian worldview and the lordship of Christ to your family, to your friends, to all of those God has providentially placed in your life today. But we understand you'll be serving in different roles, in different capacities as you do that. So you might not be a sniper Okay, you might be more of a soldier on the front line, or you might even be a cook on the back line. That's fine, too. But everyone has to handle their rifle and steward the gospel well. Well, with that picture in mind, equipping evangelists, they equip each saint to handle their rifle, and we hope, in God's grace and power, they also help unify and multiply their entire churches in that good fight together. But they do that all under the authority but also the example of their local church leaders, okay? So to bring a more balanced perspective to this core collaborative category of church life, I want to close with a little more of something that we call gospel health coverage with the cross current. Now, this is just a simple summary of the doctrine of this particular gospel health category and some simple suggestions for putting that doctrine into practice in three key areas of personal, of family, and of church discipleship. And again, I say this every time, as an equipping evangelist, it would bring joy to my heart to email you your own copy of this gospel health coverage from this episode of the program, but also any others that you've heard previously. Okay. So I want to read this. Here we go. Gospel health coverage with a cross current, how leadership helps gospel health. In doctrine, as all Christians are commanded to imitate their leaders, Hebrews 13, 7, it follows that church-wide growth in gospel health starts with core leaders collaborating together in gospel ministry according to their God-given roles and responsibilities to equip the entire body of Christ. While the equipping evangelist will necessarily have more experience and expertise in equipping the saints to advance and give a defense of the gospel. Hear this. Lasting gospel health can only happen when all core leaders commit to being the evangelistic example they expect in their congregants. Practically, this necessitates leaders consistently doing the work of an evangelist and personal witness, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, and also faithfully being shepherds over the equipping evangelist and all those engaged in gospel ministry together. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. In this pattern of collaboration, our mutual ministry and partnership in the gospel brings greater gospel health from the core leadership to entire church community to the praise and glory of Christ. Okay, so that is the doctrinal perspective on how leadership helps gospel health. How about practically speaking? Well, in personal discipleship, here's some action items. During a time of personal devotion this week, read Hebrews 13. And take the time to thank God for your leaders and pray for their collaborative effort in gospel ministry together. 
we re- always recommend a, a resource of some sort. And uh, this Al Mohler book, The Conviction to Lead, is a great one. There's others as well, but that's one that we recommend in our Equipping Evangelist Coaching here at the Cross Current. But what about family discipleship? Well, again, read Hebrews 13, paying special attention to verse 7, and discuss together the various ways that you thank God for the example of your core church leaders. That's a great exercise to do as a family. And then you can you can converge your thoughts into an encouraging email to send to your church leaders from your family. Love that. And how about corporate or church discipleship? Well, during corporate discipleship, invite saints to testify as to how the Bible teaching and evangelistic example of your leaders has impacted their own walk for Christ. That's an amazing way to encourage your leaders together in their example of collaborative gospel ministry. Folks, gospel health matters. And again, to get started with your church's, your church's gospel health report, you can get this going at gospelhealthreport.com. There's an info video, it's an instructional video as well, and you can request to get your own church's report, both individually and a church unity report as well. And if you have any questions, okay, about gospel health, about gospel leadership, or anything else related to equipping evangelism, you can submit those by going to theequippingevangelist.com, click on that Got Questions, Get Answers button, and we will respond to those. And please also subscribe and share this podcast with others. Click that subscribe button below to listen every week and to get your entire church equipped for evangelism together. And then please share this podcast to multiply gospel ministry because that is needed so, so much. And again, may God bless you and your church as you get equipped for evangelism together.